we were at a farm, and we were just picking up some stuff, and somehow he, the, the farm owner said, oh, are you a pastor? And I thought, you know, I really tried to, I wasn't there to, you know, advertise my ministry or something. I don't know how, he, I, he, I said, how do you know I'm a pastor? And he just picked up, you know, our church people will say, Pastor Steve. And so we were with some church people, and somebody said, Pastor Steve, and was pointing to a cage or something like that. And, and it's very normal for us. And sometimes people say, well, why do you have to call somebody pastor? You don't have to. But you can see, here's an example. If you call the anointing out, right, it, even within earshot, a farmer is interested and says, oh, you're a pastor. So he starts talking to me and he says, oh, you're born again. And he wants to know what kind of church we are. And he wants to talk about the Bible. I suppose it's, it's an exciting thing when humans come, if you work with animals all day. So he was very happy to, to talk to some humans. And we, find, we got on. This is totally him. I wasn't trying at all to preach. I was just trying to get some stuff from the farm. And we got on to tongues. We got on to speaking in tongues. And he said, you know, well, he just doesn't believe in it. You know, like Hillsong. And, and, and first of all, I said, well, who are you talking about that, that you don't like? And he, he was trying to criticize some people. And he finally said, Benny Hinn. And I said, okay, well, I have heard Benny Hinn. And he preaches the gospel. And I see people have gotten saved and people got healed. And, and um he says, well, he waves his hand, and then people fall backwards. In the Bible, you're supposed to, you're supposed to fall forward. <laughs> I said, well, that's a new one. I'm not sure. I mean, you can bow forward, yeah. But if you fall, right? If, I mean, the most helpless thing, the most risky thing is to fall backwards, right? When you do trust games and things like that in leadership training, you fall backwards, somebody catches you. You fall forward, you can still kind of help yourself. So I said, I'm not sure that that's true, but that's not really something that you would want to criticize a ministry that's getting the gospel out and getting people healed. And so I said, well, what, what else are you talking about? Why you don't, you know, he just doesn't believe in that tongue. Said, well, I don't believe these, these Pentecostal churches. I said, well, which one? Give me one. Um, he said, well, like Hillsong. Well, I said, I have been to Hillsong, so what don't you like about it? And I'm not, I'm not from Hillsong, I'm not associated with Hillsong, but I just I want to investigate what people are saying. And he said, well, they, they, just, they just go on about speaking in tongues. You know, it's all, all the service is about speaking in tongues, and they, they make you speak in tongues. And I said, well, I have been to 45 countries, and I don't know a single church that all they do is speak in tongues. I've never yet been to a church or a service. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I, I personally have not been to any church where all they do is you walk in and and all the way to the end, you know, when they, I guess, serve you tea and coffee. I have never been to this service. I haven't been to a service where they don't worship God, you know, uh, in their language. They just pray in tongues. So I said, I don't know what you're talking about. So he, it turns out he had never been to Hillsong, and he had never been to a Pentecostal church, and yet he had so many of these ideas. It's amazing. And he said, well, you just got to believe the Bible, and you've got to have a balance of scriptures, and you can't just take scripture out of context. And I said, that's exactly right. Why don't you do that about speaking in tongues? Right? He just takes one scripture out of context, like, what did he say that... When, um, oh, he took this one scripture that in Acts chapter 2, when they spoke in tongues, the people who heard them understood. I said, that's one instance. That was one instance. But there were many other instances where they did not know. And Paul said, when you speak in tongues, no man understands you. Did you ever ask why God put speaking in tongues in the Bible? Well, obviously, he had never asked. He had been so busy criticizing and trying to make fun of things that he didn't, clearly he didn't know. And he, he never thought, what is the benefit? Well, I said, well, first of all, one of the benefits is uh, Jude chapter 1, verse 6 says that you, uh, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up. How many people need to be built up? What if you feel down? What if somebody tears you down? What would you do? 
You can build yourself up. So I don't feel like it. Yeah, you can do it without any feeling. You don't need to feel like speaking in tongues. You just kindarama sokuriya meshe, suramandere meshe. You're building yourself up. You you do that for just a few seconds. You're already lifted up. You're already feeling better, right? Your mind quiets down. Your spirit becomes alert. You need this. You need the spirit in the last days. You need to know the leading of the Holy Spirit in these last days. You don't want to get on the wrong plane. You don't want to be in the wrong place. You know where some war breaks out or who knows what people are going to do or famine. You need to be in the right place. You need to be led. Right? So there's one benefit, building yourselves up. And then I said, Paul said that he, when he speaks in tongues, he said he thanks God that he spoke in tongues more than all the Corinthians. All that Pentecostal charismatic bunch that's in the Bible, he thanked God he spoke in tongues more than them. Why? Because he speaks to God, not to men. He speaks to God. And when he speaks to God, no man understands him, but in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. So there are mysteries. He says, I just pray for what I know. I say, that's good. Please pray. I'm not taking it away from you. Please pray for what you know. But what about things you don't know? Hmm. He didn't have an answer. What do you do with things you don't know? So I gave him an example. And if you've been to our church a while, you've heard me say this. But when I was a young Christian, my mother was driving home in New York from church. Our church is 45 minutes away. And at some point I said, you know, Mom, I have a burden to pray. I'm not sure what about. So, excuse me, I'm going to pray in tongues. So I think I prayed the whole way, right? Do you remember this? I prayed the whole way. It must have been 40 minutes. It was the whole, whole ride. You know, as soon as you leave the church and take a turn from, the, from the, the, the lights, then we're on a 45 minute drive. I am praying in tongues the whole way, at least 40 minutes. I get there and you could say, well, we've arrived home, you know, what's there to eat or let's go watch TV or something. But I didn't feel the release. I didn't, I didn't have that note of victory. So I said, excuse me, I'm going to go to my bedroom. I'm going to keep praying. So I prayed probably another hour until I felt that victory, until I felt a release from the burden. I had no idea. And the, the farmer asked me, did you know what you were praying? I said, I had no idea. But you kind of have an idea when you're praying because as you're quiet, you know that whether you're praying for yourself or you're praying for someone far. And I got the sense I'm praying for someone far away. So I just am content to be praying for somebody else. I could be praying for a missionary somewhere who might you know, be in danger. Someone's going to kill him for preaching the gospel or something. So I'm content to not know who I'm praying for, but I know I'm praying for somebody. I'm praying out the mysteries of God. I'm praying the perfect will of God. When I had that victory, you know, you usually feel like praising God or singing and, and, and then you just thank God and that's it. So I did not know what I prayed for. But a week later, my father called my mother and he lives in Namibia, which used to be Southwest Africa. And he takes these long drives to the Angolan border. Okay, so the capital is called Windhoek. The Angolan border is, on, is in the north, South Africa is south and the roads are like this because you drive through the desert so he has a Mercedes and you know he does like a test run you know it goes uh, pedal uh, metal to the pedal and or whatever it's called and 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 he just goes as fast as he can to get to the top and my mother told him you know don't drive at night and don't go alone take someone with you so what does he do he drives at night and he takes no one with him. And his brother was there. His brother, my uncle, also lives in America, but happened to be visiting. So he was there. But he doesn't take him. So he drives from Windhoek up to, the, to Angola. And on the way, on one of these straight stretches, one of these African buffaloes, boop, just, you know, they, it's, it's their home, right? So they don't know roads. They just walk across the road. And there's no time to to stop in time. So the buffalo crushes the Mercedes, flips over, 
The head is cut off. He said the head is, already, is cut off and the horns come right through the passenger seat. So if his brother had been there, his brother would have been instantly killed. His brother's not in the seat. My father opens the door, gets out, and a car happens to be passing by in the middle of the night in the desert. Picks him up, takes him home. So we say, when did this happen? And he describes the time, and it matches the time. I was feeling the burden to pray, but I did not know how to pray. There's no way I could have said, oh, dear God, please uh, prevent that buffalo from walking across my dad's path. How would I know that? How many things go on in your life that you would have no idea? And you say, well, it's up to God. No, it's not. It's up to you. You have been given a gift. If you would receive it, the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How do you receive it? The Bible says the man of God lays hand on you. Peter and John did that. Paul did that. I will do that. I lay hands on you and pray for you to be filled. Then what happens? Then you will lift up your hands in a sign of surrender, take a deep breath, and begin to pray. Just like that. Just like that. And how many things can you pray for that you don't know right now? Well, it's practically infinite. Things you don't know about your own situation, things you don't know about your children, where they're at, they're going to be somewhere that you cannot monitor. Things about missionaries in faraway places. Things about if you want to pray all the time, there's seven billion people alive who all need prayer. You will never run out of things to pray when you pray in tongues. So I said to the guy, I said, I prayed an hour and 40 minutes. I said, how long do you pray? He said, well, I don't, I don't pray that long. I said, that's right, because if you pray in English, what do you say? Oh, God, bless my wife, my children, my chooks, my farm. In Jesus' name, amen. How much more you got? You can have a prayer list. You can have some prayer requests. You're not going to go for two hours praying like that. But when you pray in tongues, you can just enjoy. Just enjoy. Just pray. So he, he was, I was, I, was, I was the first challenge to, you know, to his theology, let's say. So I could see there was a deposit made, but I believe I'll see him again, so we'll work on it. Right? But here, here, today, you can receive. You can receive. Don't be afraid. It's so easy. In fact, it's the easiest thing because it's like receiving Jesus. How can I go to heaven? I don't know how to go to heaven. I wish I could go to heaven. You don't need to wish any longer. Come up and receive Jesus. How do I do that? God has called me to help you. I'm here to, walk, to hold your hand and walk you through it. So how do I receive the Holy Spirit? I'm here to hold your hand and walk you through it. So I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Make sure there's no hindrance. Nothing is blocking you. We ask God for f forgiveness for everything so, so we don't think, oh, I'm a sinner. I cannot receive. We're going to receive it today. Okay? Lift up your hands. And then take a breath. People forget to breathe. Believe me, it's very strange, but people forget to breathe because they're so stressed out that how is this going to happen? Breathe, and when you exhale, make any sound that isn't from you know, your language. You don't even say hallelujah. A lot of people do that. You, pr you pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit and they say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Don't do that. Nothing in English, nothing that you know. We're just going to relax and let the Holy Spirit fill us and begin to pray. You ready to do that? All right, let's do it. Say, dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father I'm, so I'm so thankful for the gift of your Son. I truly believe Jesus washed my sins. He died on the cross. He paid the price for my mistakes and my sins. And He rose again from the dead. You did it for me. And then you said, whoever believes will have eternal life and I will send you 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. I am ready to receive. I open up my heart. Fill me now with your power. I believe the next words that I speak will come from you. I will not understand them, but I will yield to you. I am ready in Jesus' name. Go ahead, begin. Receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let the holy anointing of God fill you. Fill you. Every part. Every Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Onde en vonta sin deshon do vose ken shente. Very good. Keep going. Keep going. Sora mambare ken samare she. Oh, be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled to overflowing, abundant anointing, abundant life, abundant healing, abundant healing. Tina baro kusho kuriya maran tarama samba mbrike tere beshi. So kisha mare tere sinken tarama shokura mamba. This gift will never leave you or forsake you. This gift is yours forever. Forever and ever. He will never leave you or forsake you. And you are empowered. Hallelujah. With the same Spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead. The same Spirit that caused Jesus to walk on water and multiply bread. The same Spirit that brought sight to the blind and made the lame to walk. The same Spirit is at work, church. Right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, glory, glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. And the Lord said, it is better that I go away. For if I go not away, the Father won't send the Holy Spirit. It's better that I go away. And the Father will send the Holy Spirit. And He will convict the world of righteousness. And judgment. And sin. He'll be that convicting power when you preach the gospel. He'll be that convicting power. He'll be that confirmation. It's no longer you doing it in your own flesh. All the things that God has called you to do, you will not be doing it alone anymore. Is that divine? Praise you, Lord.